Hello, this is um, extremely exciting uh, for me because I am engineer by heart, engineer by profession, and I mostly talk with computers and talking with people, especially about anything not related to computer directly, is extremely um, out of my comfort zone. So uh, I'm very happy to do that, and please be, please be. Um, no, I, I think I, I'm sure you can be helpful. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is kind of a story with example and with statistics uh, how three Caucasian males in their thirties uh, can do something about diversity. Uh, there were three of us. I'm just one of them. Uh, the other two couldn't come because one just got married and is on the honeymoon, and the other is getting married today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think they, I, th I think they done it on purpose. Uh, I'm not sure about it, but I'll figure it out. So, uh, as as Asha said, I would like to make it a bit interactive. So there is this app called Slido. So if you go to sli.do or slido.com, uh, it's a website. And if you enter this uh, code, you can post in any questions. Uh, or, or whatever concerns are. And I'll be looking there from time to time as I have it uh, uh, here on my second screen. There are some questions that need to be answered. If you, if you say such a bold topic, what three men can tell you about diversity. Actually, I already got this question earlier on from one of the person that are already in here. Uh, how comes that we do talk about diversity and there are no female invo females involved? And there are just three men trying to do something about diversity. Uh, yes, this is, this, is, this is a harsh topic. Um, there, are, there are reasons for that, and I will cover that during the session, trying to answer all your questions and concerns and giving you some ideas. What can we, uh, what can we do about it? So there are three men. There's Damian, who's running uh, Voice of Jack, so Java Users Group, very programming oriented. There is Martin. That's the guy who is getting married. There is, there is me. I am the only one in suit because I have the privilege to talk about uh, now. Um, so whenever three gigs decide to do something, uh, we usually start with a website. Uh, so we obviously have a website. It's called Diversity.io. It's in Polish, and it covers some basic facts about diversity and why it's important and, and uh, what you can do about it. We did it because uh, once at some conference, uh, IT conference, so mostly male conference, unfortunately. Uh, we had this conversation at, uh, I think, at the speaker's reception. How it comes that hardly anybody, uh, that those conferences are, are so not diverse at all. There are mostly uh, male speakers, mostly white male speakers. Uh, though there are problems with uh, people with various disabilities of getting to the venue, moving around the venue, uh, not talking about some basic facts like not everybody is supporting eating meat. And as I go to a conference, I would like to have an option and I would like those conferences to be more inclusive. And we had a conversation about m multiple speakers and obviously there were opinions and there are people who said, well, we did open call for papers we have an open ticket sales, so whoever would like to come can come. And we cannot trick statistics that in IT industry, it's mostly males. So, so we thought that that's not entirely true because it used to be different back in times, like 50 years ago, uh, this, this industry was much more diverse. And the other thing was, uh, we wanted to challenge that. We want to do something about and change it. So that's why we start digging up, drilling down the subject, and coming up with uh, with this website as a something to help us drive the change in the industry. Something that we can refer to and say, okay, have a look. There are some facts there. There's some uh, some research that can change you, persuade others. That was the first step. Uh, but then there are there other things. Uh, the question was why there were three males? Because personally I was involved in the programming community and where I live in Gdańsk. 
And mm -hmm. both Martin and Damian are very involved in the programming communities in Warsaw. And if there are people who should be able to drive changes, there are, these are people who are in charge, who have this ability to freely choose participants or freely choose speakers for their events, for their meetups. And that's what we decided to do. We said, we will do our best, we'll increase some efforts for those three meetups that we run will become more diverse, will become uh, more open, more inclusive and uh, go uh, and attract not only senior engineers, but also people after boot camps, people who would like to change their profession, um, more, more people from, um, from other countries try to make some meet up meetings bilingual, not only Polish, so that we can, we can, attract, uh, we can attract other. And that's why we started with that, because we were the people who can drive the change. We can change our attitude towards the, the, the meetings, and that way we can improve them. However, this is not the only thing, because when we talk about the diversity, we do not only talk about male to female ratio. We can talk about many other things that goes under this huge umbrella of being inclusive. So I have a question to you. Uh, what is diversity? What it means? What does diversity mean to you? And if you can, whenever you type in something, it will pop up. Because I'm really curious about your opinions, how, what you believe is, is about being diverse or about being inclusive. Because um, it appears, I, I hope it works. What we start to see is that if you, if, you, if you start talking, especially in the IT industry, about diversity as males and females, as a gender, um, people get very anxious. People are, are pushing back and then try to come up with different ideas why that's not the case and why we shouldn't bother and why we are open to everybody else and it just happens that not everybody is interested. So we start to think that maybe we could, when we should take this idea of diversity uh, or inclusivity um, wider, have, have a wider, wider, wider spectrum. Because we start to think how we personally feel at the meetups and IT conferences. And my personal opinion was that I like going out to conferences. It's not only about gender, it's about um, having a variety of people, having people who has never attended a conference to attend, have a people who have never spoken at a conference to be able to speak, to go out and, and, and uh, reach, out, uh, reach out to them. Uh, for to have a teams that are not average 25 years old. For example, I work at the moment at a team that I am the eldest one and I am not even 40. And that's not very diverse and that's not good for teams. And the, also the other one, I used to work um, on a team that I was the youngest and was, I was over, over 30, which wasn't, wasn't good as well. So we start to think, what can we do to improve? Whoa. Yeah. What can we do to, to, to get the, this exactly the amount of differences on, on many levels, on the age level and on the religion level, and uh, have, this, have this environment uh, to be more open? Uh, so I have a story about it. Uh, in IT programming, who, who, who's, who's uh, developing code in here? Who has something to do? Yeah, a few people. So this is, this is a very internal joke, tabs versus spaces, programmers will know. Uh, this is this ongoing discussion, what we should be using. And I recently stumbled upon something that totally blew, blew my mind in this tabs versus space discussion. You know, people, programmers tend to do either tabs when they do code or change tab into four spaces and say spaces are better for reasons. And the thing is that there is this discussion on Reddit, which is amazing. There's a guy who's recently working in a company that used tabs. And the guy wanted to be a little bit hip. So he created a repository, new service, whatsoever. And he started to evangelize, evangelize about tabs versus spaces, to favor tabs. You know, it's just a white space. Nobody see that, right? Wrong. He got approached, but not one, by two people. They're co-workers 
who were highly visually impaired. And it was mind-blowing to me. I, I've never thought about it in that way. So each of them had a different visual uh, impediment. And one of them, uh, one of them used a, a tarp, a very tiny one, because he had a huge font on the monitor. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm close to 30. I have huge fonts on the monitor as well. Uh, so I can relate to that. And the other one was having a huge monitor because of other disabilities. And uh, he had a very wide top. You can do that with spaces. And with just this single thing, you stop being inclusive. You just make other people's work far more miserable, much more miserable than it used to be. Just with this single, single thing you've hardly heard, thought about. So what we, what we see is that this inclusivity is a spectrum. It can be tackled on many levels, not only gender, as many people uh, think, but also people of color, people of different religions, those times versus spaces, those ages, and so on and so forth. So what we start to do is on all our meetups, we decide to rigorously think who are we inviting as a speaker and what we do to make our speaking community or our IT community more diverse. So we started with stop inviting people who we already know. You know, I love hanging out with friends. I love coming out to conferences because there are some conferences that I feel like home. There are people who I meet every year or every now and then and they are my true friends. I have families who hang out together. So I thought maybe we shouldn't be inviting those people to the meetups. Maybe a meetup like, or a small conference like this one should be a place that other people can stand up and do things that they've never were able to do or they never had courage to do. So we start inviting new people and we start reaching out to people saying, I've seen your blog post, this is very interesting. Uh, would you like to come and like talk more about it? And the result was astonishing. People said, yeah, I would love to. I never had courage because I thought that those meetups are so advanced, that are so senior and you know, I'm, 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 you know, imposter syndrome. I, I don't know much about that, and no, I don't want to. Uh, so we start to like what every normal people will do. We start encouraging them, trying to give them help, and encourage them to come out and stand. So before doing this presentation, I went to starts of our meetups, and I was blown away. Uh, we call it Diverse IT, which it was uh, 2018 and part of 2019, so more or less a year compared to the previous years, the old days. We, l we run less meetups because we focused on our values and we just didn't want to do random meetups with random people. We wanted to focus to have the meetups with, with values we, we believed in. So we, we run less of them, but we got better in terms of quality, not quality, into, well, uh, wrong wording. Uh, we got better in terms of who invited it. So we get more female speakers, we get much more new speakers, and we greatly improved the ratio of, well, female and male still is, isn't perfect, but we get like 60% of people who have never ever spoken publicly to go out in, the, in, in front of people like you and, and give a presentation about topics they were passionate about. That was, that was something that was something that really thought of, that really gave us a boost to work further. So how we have achieved that? There were lots of questions. People start to ask, okay, but you are doing this and why are you doing why you are not getting with this diversity topics to kids and teenagers? to primary school because it's important for girls to be into coding as well and so on and so forth. So our focus was we can do everything and everywhere, which is obvious. Uh, if we talk about diversity, and that's how we, how we think about it, you can have adults, teenagers and kids. Uh, surprisingly, when it comes to kids and when it comes to any uh, coding for kids, exercises that are at the moment out in Warsaw and Poznań and the other town, mostly 
it's, 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 it's about girls. Mostly girls are attending the coding things for Lego and for Mindstorm and so on and so forth. This is, I don't know why that happens, mostly because uh, people who run it are programmers and they encourage their daughters to attend, maybe, but that's a good thing. We are getting people into, into STEM industry. Uh, they are teenagers and they are adults and there are meetups, there are meetings for everybody, like Sergei Kodu, which is DevOps, for, which used to be DevOps for kids, it's like for, for kids six to eight. Uh, there's uh, School 3.0 and there is um, Academy of the Future, Academy of Social Machine. So there are, there are various meetings, various initiatives for different group ages, and we focus on adults. We, we, we decided consciously to mostly talk with adults and get adults either inspired or encouraged uh, to move on. So how we did it. I tell you a little bit. Uh, we did all those reach outs and we stepped out uh, out of the, our comfort zone. Uh, we were talking with others. It was hard, and um, that was hard because uh, getting out in front of people is, is hard for everybody. It's hard for for engineers as well. Getting in front of engineers, being an engineer, and talking about diversity on an engineering meetup is even harder. Uh, but uh, we get a lot of compassion and we see a lot of understanding from the other side and that, that, that allowed us uh, to move further. Because what we actually do is very straightforward. And there is a thought experiment I would like to show you, which in essence bottoms up what, what we are doing. So let's imagine a, a thing. Imagine there is a giant bucket of marbles, like hundreds of thousands of tiny marbles, beautiful. And there are 80% of those are blue, and 20% of those are pink, equally fabulous. And out of those, in each of the group, about 10% is sparkling. So it's, they are even more gorgeous. They are oh, amazing. And imagine I give you a task. I tell you, pick out 10 sparkling and say, well, that's easy. And I say, pick up 10 sparkling, five pink, five blue. Right? Pick up 10 sparkling mables. You won't say it's impossible. You clearly see it's possible. We'll just say, yeah, you just need more time for that. And that's exactly what people running meetups and people out running conferences should be about. Spending more time and getting this environment more diverse. Because it is not hard to find female speakers or it's not hard for an English speaking conference to get people from around the world. It's just a matter of effort. Uh, a tiny effort. I personally, I do run conferences and it's a huge, huge effort to do. And I can imagine people who push, push back on that saying, ah, oh, we just do call for papers and whoever attends, they attend. But then people who are organizing such a meetups are kind of a thought leaders, are kind of pushing this industry further and we should expect more from them. Like picking up the right marbles. We'll get to this conference thing later on. So I have another question. Is there anything you can do tomorrow to make your environment more diverse? In a way that we did with, with our meetups. We just sat down and said, we can do it better. And what we, that's what we did. If you would not like to share that, what we, what we see uh, during during our efforts, is that this idea of being able to be bringing up the more diverse environment is, is growing like a tree. There are multiple things we can, we can do. And what we do, we start to focus on newcomers, people who has never been into an in industry, like never been speaking, or just newcomers to the industry. They used to be carpenters, but now they would like to be testers or, or programmers. There are lots of people like that. And I really respect them because it's not easy to change your job. 
when you are 40, for example. So we focus on those people and we start finding talents, supporting them. That's, that's not hard to do. You know, if there are more than two people involved or three people involved, it's really easy to, to spend on a regular basis time with people and share your knowledge, share what you know. Then there is this organizational level. Uh, you know, we, we wanted to have a website, we, we wanted to, to bring out the message, so, so there is lots of about copywriting or supporting the communities uh, that people can go out and do. It's, people say, ah, I don't have time or I am very busy, but in fact, if you have more than a single person, it's just half an hour a week or an hour a week. There's my wife there, and she can tell you that I used to spend a lot of time doing meetups, like too much. And now, as we grown the community, the people, there are things that you can delegate, that you can help and support on a very tiny bit. Sometimes it's as tiny as being able to send out a survey after each meetup, and there's a person in our community who does that. And I don't have to do it, and it's their responsibility, and they support us in that way. And the survey is essential for people who just came and had their very first presentation to get a quality feedback and know how to grow, how to, how to, how to improve, and how to be uh, better. And finally, we can, we can work organically on a very, very lowest level, like work with kids, work with teenagers or mentor, mentor adults and, and try, to, uh, try to change them. Is it worth it? Well, it is totally worth it because I'll give you some more numbers. Uh, there's this conference which I totally love. It's called Kikon. It's an IT conference. That's a photo from 2009. I found it recently and I love it because these were the speakers 10 years ago. And it was kind of okay-ish at that time, no one bothered. Uh, now it's like less acceptable. People would like to have a more variety of that. And we start together with Geekon working to make it better. So Geekon realized, people running Geekon realized that just putting a couple of papers and saying that, oh, I would like to have a more diverse lineup doesn't really work. Well, it works kind of, but that's not what we'd like to have. And what we did with Geekon is we start to get personally with potential speakers and attendees and encourage them to sign up and encourage them to, to come over. And in 2018, Geekon had two female speakers out of 75 total speakers. You say that's very little, but uh, that's kind of a standard for IT conferences in Europe, unfortunately. There was another conference at the same year, no, 2019, that had four female speakers out of 90. And with a bit of effort, with an effort of reaching out to the speakers and trying to get people involved, making this step forward, we got together with Econ into seven out of 70. So we got kind of 10%, which is nothing compared to uh, what we would like to have, like 30, 40%. But it's a huge improvement in what we used to have. And the very personal thing is that the moment those conferences get more diverse in terms of um, people of color, in terms of, in terms of gender, in terms of religions, it was much more pleasant to attend because the conversations were much more meaningful because there are people from all around the world with different values sharing them, which thought to be an amazing experience. There is one more conference running, running here, which is saying, we'll do pure statistics. So we will let people sign in, we'll let people submit the papers, and then we will let other people vote for what they like, which sounds a very democratic approach, like have a sign-ups, have a list of talks, and then let people choose what they would like to have. So we again did the start, so we did the math. So out of about 90 submissions, 
there are three female submissions, which was totally open. There's a well-known conference in a big town in Poland. Uh, I don't want to call it by name because uh, I, I, I'm not here about punning any, anybody. Uh, but that, that was the ratio. And when people voted, out of those 90, 35 presentations were chosen, the technical one, and, and there was an, only one female speaker. And in fact, she was a co-speaker of a male speaker. Uh, I did this distinction between technical and soft skills because I thought initially that uh, it's much easier to get a higher ratio in terms of diversity, gender diversity, and the soft skills, but it appears that it still wasn't the case. So, what can we do better? Uh, the thing is that there, are, there, there were a few conferences that, for example, start doing a blind call for papers. So they said, please submit, and the papers will be evaluated purely based on the quality of a submission. Uh, no bio included, no information about the, uh, the speaker. It was done in such a way that in the, in the um, um, in the, in the committee evaluating the papers, there were people whose only responsibility was to go through each and every paper and reach out to the uh, person submitted, who has submitted, to eliminate everything that could potentially um, direct a reader towards a particular person. So totally blind call for papers. And what appeared that after evaluation, they ended up with 100% wild male speakers. So they stepped back and didn't, didn't organize the conference. It was GitHub a few years ago. Uh, and they changed their policy. They said, starts is great, but we have to do better. We have to do this step, this additional step to reach out to people and to encourage them to get better quality. And that's exactly what we did together with Martin and Damien, and that's what I encourage everybody to do if they would like to do, to have their environment more diverse. Just a small step and, and go personal and try to attract people individually. Because if you go out and say, if I go out and say like, please submit, we would like to have this conference diverse, most of you will say like, hmm, okay, I'll think about it, right? And hardly ever will submit. But if I go to you and you and you and ask for that, the responses are totally different. Because then we get start getting personal and you can say, ah, but I am a little bit afraid. Ah, I'm not feeling comfortable with the subject. I feel comfortable with the other subject. And then based on the conversation, you can, you can, you can move on and you can get to those people uh, with you. So just telling people that you can vote or you can register isn't enough and to make our environment more diverse, especially in the IT industry, we had to get personal, and that's what we did. That wasn't easy, but it was, I think, successful. And that was the story I, would, I wanted to, to share. Thank you very much. Um, there are questions, maybe, uh, so I'll just click it to see. Uh, we, uh, were you checking how diversity speaker influenced diversity and the honest? Yes, we did check. Initially, it didn't. <laughs> Uh, for the first few meetups when we really stepped out uh, and have female speakers, um, that didn't change much. Uh, it was sometimes even worse because male speakers uh, were very dicky about it, you know, but people are people. Uh, uh, but uh, as we moved on, it improved. Uh, it improved, it wasn't like 50-50, all I can hear that we have half of the uh, female speakers and English-speaking people and so on, uh, but it was better. It was better. Uh, what we also did in our meetups in, in, in Gdańsk is that for every meeting, we very consciously thought about subjects and tried to make a meetup with uh, a single theme, with one presentation being more of an entry level and the second one being advanced. And we got a lot of people who are just new to the industry 
Um, and, uh, and they were very eager to attend. That was a fun, one thing. And by the way, from people changing their profession and getting to the ID industry, there are a lot of women. There are a lot, based on the boot camps I've been working with, uh, it can be up to 50-50. So, so the, the, the environment, the, the community is getting more diverse. So it was improving. Are you planning something for diverse speakers not returning to speaking? Often I see people trying and not returning. Uh, yes, um, this, is, this is a very hard topic because it requires a lot of, lot of effort. Uh, what we are trying to do, and to be honest, that's kind of a vote for hands because uh, I'm running out of capacity. <laughs> uh, we know and we have lots of people who are very good in supporting public speaking public speakers who run uh, trainings for public speakers. And as we got uh, very personally with them, uh, I know that we can organize, for example, workshops for people who would like to improve their, their, their speaking skills. The problem is that uh, my day is only 24 hours. I know how it's yours. Uh, and I'm running out of time. And so, for example, all my colleagues and uh, we nearly were there with getting one more person to focus on those, um, those events, but that failed. Uh, we're trying to get back to that. So we are trying to uh, get another person that will focus on, for example, running workshops or inviting people to workshops, and like workshop, uh, where they will uh, focus only on improving their, their um, their speaking capabilities. That's that's the one thing. Uh, we get companies that are happy to support it, so it probably will be totally free of charge, and uh, that will be for people who are who tried speaking and and didn't want to come back. As it th there is another subtlety of that, there were there are people coming to conferences and um, not returning because the community is not very inclusive. Well. There's not much we can do. We regularly throw somebody away because we don't accept certain behaviors and we have to stand for our own values and that's what we, what, what we do. So I don't know if that question referred to that, but that's also a thing. Uh, what do you think about lowering a price for courses, certification, women, elder people, all the... I personally have a mixed opinion about courses and certificates. Well, mostly certifications, but courses, uh, courses better. Uh, I do really believe in diversity tickets. So when there is a conference and uh, the attendance, like it's a huge success, and there are, um, the, the conference tickets are 1,000 euro, I do really believe that as an organizer, as a successful organizer, it's not a huge effort to have a significant discount for people who cannot attend. Uh, usually, and I personally know a few conferences like this, that they had a companies that supported people who couldn't come, including travel and expenses and the conference tickets. So yes, I'm, I'm for that. I, I do believe that that's, that's a step that we can, as an organizer, um, uh, support and facilitate. Uh, there's always this shady area on choosing the right people and, and uh, knowing who is really um, who, who really should get this help and support. Um, but I do believe that without trying, we will never get there. So there will be people cheating, but that's the environment we are living in. What can you do tomorrow? Ace conference organizers supported top preparation. That's that's an amazing thing. There are a few conferences including that's the one I, I co-run, that, uh, that reach out to people and do the preparations. Uh, what you can do always is encourage people to submit and do not do a ruthless evaluation, reject it, reject it, reject it, but reach out to people and try to understand the message they were trying to put and improve on that message. Uh, there are some prominent conferences, community conferences run uh, in Holland and in Norway, one is Java Zone, the other is uh, JFull, run by um, a Dutch programming community that were quite successful on that. 
uh, they encouraged new people to come and made a huge effort to 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 improve on the on the ratio. So that's 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 something that I really encourage you and that's well that's hard to do but really valuable. Sipan discuss the problem and offer the help to people organize conferences and meetups. Uh, yes. That reaching out to, to your local community and, and offering help is amazing. Everything that's done there, it's done pro bono. No one, usually nobody earns any money, that's their free time. And the more hands, the, the better. Uh, I don't know how I can share it with you, but I think it will... Uh, I don't know if you, as a participant, do you see those questions and answer? No? Damn it! I will do something so you will be able to see that. I didn't, uh, this, 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 this is a new tooling. I will do something to share it, uh, or I'll just put it in a single doc and share it uh, on Twitter, because I think that that's valuable for everybody. And I hope you got inspired to make your environment or your community more di more diverse. Thank you very much. <laughs>